Hey boys and girls, welcome back. We're doing another modification video on the Miata today. And um, what you're looking at is all the stuff that you need to do a DIY coil on plugs conversion. So we're gonna do, this has been uh, um, kind of common in the Miata world for quite some time is converting over your coil pack that it lives on the back of your um, um, valve cover and uh, uh, with wires and everything like that that goes across and you convert it to coil on plug. So the question may be, why do you wanna do this? Well, we do it for the street cred, but um, also we do it if you're going to be boosting uh, and, and um, putting more uh, pressure on your ignition system basically, what coil on plug gives you is a stronger spark uh, by separating out the uh, coils to individual cylinders, then you get a sp stronger spark. And if you're having to replace something, second reason is if you're having to replace something on your ignition system anyway, like you have a coil, a stock coil pack that goes out, or you're looking to replace wires and stuff, this is actually not that expensive. And so we're gonna go through what all these components are and the price of each that I paid, and um, you can get an idea for yourself of if you wanna do this or not. Um, so first off, we have the coils. Now these are um, OEM Toyota coil packs, and here's the part number on there. They're Denso sourced. So when you get these, you wanna see that it has this little um, rubber fitting right there um, that helps with kind of waterproofing the hole as well as keeping down vibration. And you wanna inspect the inside. You can't see it on camera, but there's a little spring contact in there. So you wanna make sure that each one of your uh, coils has one of those springs, otherwise you're not gonna get any spark to your spark plug. And uh, so you need four of them. And um, I got this set for about 40, 50 bucks on eBay. And then to connect to each one, you're gonna need a Toyota style um, coil connector. It's four pin. And I got this set of four for about 10 bucks on Amazon. And then these are some specialized connectors which go to your uh, coil packs. Now, I'm taking kind of the baller route. These are gonna be plug and play, and I found these particular ones online, and they actually fit into the uh, female sockets on, that, go, that plug into your coil pack. So this is basically the same socket as a coil pack on a stock Miata. And so your, your plugs are actually gonna fit into this. And so that makes it completely plug and play. The other option here is you can see that the, uh, the connector leads here are pretty tiny. And to be exact, they're 0.09 um, or about two and a quarter millimeters connectors. So if you get the if you get the 90s, they call them spade connectors like this, then you can do this without buying this thing. But I decided to go kind of all out and get the full plug and play route. And these are about nine bucks a piece on the website. And I will leave a link in the description. All right, next up is sort of your bracketry. Now you'll notice on these coils that they have a little um, screw hole here for your um, for it to be bolted down. They are meant to be bolted down. If you don't bolt them down, they're going to vibrate loose. And actually, because of that spring connector that I mentioned before, um, it's not going to make a really good contact. You you want that spring to be depressed a little bit, so it's going to fit firmly in there. And that's why you want to bolt it down so that it's it's, it's not going to move. And so for that. Um, We've got this 1.5 inch uh, flat bar stock. Um, and I just got this, you can get a sheet, um, just any kind of sheet metal if you wanna use that. I'm gonna, hopefully this isn't too thick. This is eighth inch thick, which is kind of thick. But um, this was just easy to pick up. I think it was about seven or eight bucks at my local hardware store. And it's 36 inches long. We're only gonna need 15 inches. And this is gonna fit right across the valve cover of the Miata. And so we're gonna drill three holes. And um, I've got these, uh, uh, well, the three holes are gonna be for the 
um, valve cover bolts. We're gonna use our existing valve cover bolts and pop these in here. So we're gonna measure where those go and we're gonna drill all those out. And then for the four coal packs, we're gonna drill four holes with these machine screws and these are flat headed machine screws. And so we've got a, you might want a countersunk um, bolt uh, bit to drill these out, um, which I have, I'm not showing here, but I've got that. And um, once we drill those four holes out, um, we'll also need to get a one inch hole, which is, I've got my one inch bimetal uh, hole saw for the actual spark plug holes. So we're gonna drill four holes for that. And we've got associated nuts for all that. We're gonna lock down the nuts against the bracket. And then we've got another set of nuts to go at the top. Now I actually found some cap nuts, which are kind of similar, or they're also called acorn nuts, similar to the valve cover uh, nuts that are already there. So it kind of matches, but they only had three. <laughs> I got these at Home Depot, they only had three. So I picked up three and hopefully I can go back and get another one, but these will be like kind of finishing pieces uh, to make it look all uh, super awesome. And I picked up some wire. I already have some miscellaneous wire. I have different colors and whatnot, but I need, I wanted like a little bit, some 16 uh, AWG, definitely get AWG, not solid uh, for automotive use. And then um, this is gonna be, the red one's gonna be for the power line. I've got some black for the ground. I've got some green for the trigger uh, and so on. All right, so getting back out to the car now. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take off your, uh, boots for your plugs and get the wires out of the way and you're going to have the wire guides which i've already removed but which look like this and they plug in like this bolt in like that and that's a phillips head screwdriver or uh, you can use an eight millimeter socket actually for that all right so we're going to measure uh this um central strip here just going to lay this down, pull it tight, and it's like a little over 16. So I'm just going to cut at 16, and that means it can be flush on, more or less flush on either end. So it has like, you know, kind of a middle stripe effect. All right, and put that in right there. There we go. So now we got to mark out the uh, holes and we're going to get the distances here just by kind of getting this up against the, the back here and um, just marking the lines like this. This is one way to mark it. Another way to mark it is just to put a little dab of grease on here and I just use some red um, brake wipe grease. All right, so we got that marked in a couple different ways. So what we're gonna do is uh, punch this down with a little uh, center punch tool and get it drilled out. Alrighty, next step is to get the uh, holes uh, drilled out for these actual spark plugs. All right, that looks pretty good. And of course I'm gonna be, after I finish drilling all these holes and everything like that, I'm gonna polish it up, you know, make it look all pretty. But uh, that looks decent. Okay, so you just slide them in and get them spun around kind of the way you want them. I think this is probably gonna work the best. Um, so once we've got our coils lined up the way we want them basically, um, and I had them lined up, but I found that a number two pencil will s slot in there just fine. And you can like scribe a little mark and you're done. So you can make a little mark that way. It's going to be straight down and then you can, uh, drill out, um, the holes. All right. So I've drilled out these little, uh, pilot holes and I'm going to come in here with this, um, countersink bit. Um, from the opposite side and um, uh, drill it out so that we can use our countersunk uh, screws. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So we got those little cap nuts 
on top, and then we've got a little um, nylon lock nut on bottom, and uh, I just need to get one more of these cap nuts. Um, I bought all three that they had at Home Depot, but uh, these are working great. So, we've got that set up, we can move on to wiring. Now, if we look at our plugs that are left, this one's relatively easy to see. Um, so this is the one for the one and four. And you can see on here, we've got our um, uh, different colors of wire. It's not the best. Okay, so this one is brown yellow is the trigger. And so that's gonna line up Let's see, I'll have to see which which side that is, get the plug out here and see which side it is. And then we've got our ground, which is black. Then we've got our tack, which is black and white. And then we got blue, which is power. All right, so back on the bench, I have plugged in the coil side of the harness on each one, and it's being held in place nicely by our bracket. And we're getting ready to connect um, the um, coil side or coil uh, car side really of the harness so what I've done is um, my standard lineman splice which if you don't know how to do that that's that's what you'll need to do soldering um, in the car um, so look that up or see some of my earlier videos um, so we've got one and four down here these two go together, so this is just a twist connection. We're going to take our harness side, which I've labeled for one and four, and as you recall, the silver represents the power, and um, we're going to measure out the right amount of distance, which I've already done, and um, strip off a bit of wire, and then we'll do another lineman splice right here, so it'll go one to the to the two leads for one and four. So uh, this is a wasted spark um, configuration. And so, uh, which is fine. That'll work perfectly, uh, just like it did stock. And, um, and then we'll move on to the uh, other wires. Another quick note, I'm doing the TAC um, one now, and um, that's the second one. You can see here, I wrote down here, 12 volt powers on the bottom, tack, trigger, ground, and then we got 12 volt tack, but then we got ground trigger on the car side. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of, when I make these, I kind of offset them so that the insulation, the, the heat shrink is going to be offset so that in case the heat shrink fails or something like that, then you're not going to have direct heat shrink on heat shrink and possibly the possibility of a short. So that's just a little extra protection that you could take. All right, that's one down. You can see how I've offset kind of the, the joins here on this one. And then over here as well. So I use red for both the trigger and the actual power just because I don't have another color. Um, that's fine. And we've already got the power ones for the cylinders two and three, so we just need to wire up the remaining three leads. All right, not bad. Got the heat shrink on here, coming down to plugs. All right, so getting back out to the car, um, what I did was pull up uh, Mega Squirt and change my cranking dwell down to 3.5 and the nominal dwell to 2.5. The Toyota cops um, take a, le a lot less than what the uh, standard uh, Miata coil packs do. Um, so I'm gonna sync that up. All right, so now, before even turning on the car, we can actually go into a test mode. Go up here, test modes, come down here to injection and spark. Can um, enable test mode. And come down here to coil testing. 
And we've set it up for a three millisecond uh, thing, and we're gonna do coil A first, which I don't know which one that is, if that's one and four, I think it's one and four. We'll set that to one, and then we should be ready to start. Now, what I've done over here is the coils are outside of the plugs, and you want to make sure that each one is grounded. So I've got a lead, ground lead wrapped around each each uh, thing where it would normally be grounded into the uh, head. And that connects to a little wire down here, which is wrapped together, and then it's clamped to a, you know, some ju a jumper cable. The jumper cable is clamped to the uh, uh, lifting uh, hook that's on the car, which is grounded. So basically this is grounded to the engine block, and we should be able to test that we get spark all right so here we go and we're on coil a and we're gonna start i can hear the popping already one or four and one you can see that on the camera all right so that was successful so we're gonna switch it to coil b it should be two and three and then we're gonna hit start And that was successful. Alrighty, let's see if it works. A little hesitant, but uh, actually hasn't started in about a week or so, at least. Yep. Sounds completely normal. All right. That looks like it's fine. So I don't want to run it too hot without any wire wrap on it. Um, don't want to melt any of my nice new wires. So we're going to turn it off and get the uh, get the wires tidied up, and I'll show you the finished result. All right, and there you have it. Here's what it looks like. And connected back there. So what I used was I wrapped um, the wires First, loosely, um, you don't want to go crazy with the tape, just kind of wrap it loosely because you don't want the, uh, um, the, the wiring bundle too tight on the inside because um, it'll, it'll cause stress and abrasions over time. But this is what I used, Super 88, um, which is for higher heat purposes. And then the, la the, the wrap that I use is this kind of heat resistant nylon stuff and it's a split loom style so it has like this little you can kind of pry it open with your thumb but basically I use two things and it's open a little bit right here where it's like really thick um, but I just put a little wrap on there just to hold it so that it wouldn't um, do anything move around or anything like that but otherwise it's just holding on by itself and it goes up here and it's pretty clean. It's not touching anything. You don't want it to be laying on the valve cover or anything like that. Um, you don't want to be touching anything like right above the back of the engine or anything. Um, and then just needs to plug in to the plugs. So now that the plugs are no longer held by the coil pack, you may need to um, you know, just make sure they're not gonna rattle around or whatever. Just put a zip tie in there or something like that. All right, everybody, that concludes our DIY coil on plug conversion for the Miata. Got everything running, everything's tidied up in the engine bay, and we should be good to go. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I am now on Instagram. So I put the channel on Instagram, so you can take a look at OG Ped Zing or OG Ped Xing, whichever way you want to pronounce it. I pronounce it both ways uh, on Instagram you can follow me there and get little heads up uh, previews and tidbits of uh, various projects I may be working on 
All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. If this was helpful to you, uh, please share it to all your Miata friends. And subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching.